Hello, welcome back. Um, today at ACAN Journal, we're going to be talking about tasting wine. Um, you know, it's funny, a few years back I was at a restaurant and I ordered a flight of wine and I get there was like four or five and somebody said to me, can you really taste the difference between all those? And if you like wine, yes you can. And um, there's a very easy way to do that. Um, you get yourself three different wines. I have a Zinfandel, a Pinot Noir, and a Cabernet. And they could just as easily be um, three different brands of Pinot Noir or three different brands of Merlot. You could see how uh, the, the weather and the climate and the soil, um, you know, affect the taste of grapes and how once they're bottled. Um, in this case, I'm using three different types just so you could really differentiate them. And if you really want to have fun with this, what you do is you get your three bottles. Um, I like to keep them all the same price range. So, you know, if your price range is $10 or $15 or $20, you get to taste three wines in that same price category. Um, not always will the $100 bottle of wine be better than the $20 bottle of wine, but, but in this case, I'm, I'm going to use these three bottles that were all under $15, I would say. And I'm going to take these bags that they give to you when you buy the wine, and I'm just going to write something on there like A, B, and C. This way, if somebody really knows this bottle, and a lot of people love this bottle, it's really underrated. And I shouldn't even tell you that because I want to be able to buy another case of it. You just put it in a bag like this. This way, if somebody already knows the wine, they're not going to let their prejudices or preconceived notions like, oh, that's Mondavio, or this is from Italy, or this is from France, or this way, nobody knows what it is until, you know, when you're ready to reveal. You obviously know what went in there, so you could do a little switcheroo on yourself too. And then you want to get your little notepad and you get your glass of wine. Always have some water too because between glasses you want to rinse and clear your palate so you're really giving it the good honest look. And first of all you should notice the color. This one's pretty deep red. So you write down. Sample A. Deep red. Ruby, I mean they have all these colors, but you call whatever you want. The clarity, and it's pretty clear, it's not cloudy. Smell, this one smells fruity. And of course taste. This one's pretty bold, um, sweet, um, and if something's sweet they call that fruity, and if something's dry they call it oak or they call it, uh, you know, dry, or whatever the case may be. You can learn all the terminology later. This right here is just a way to get you familiar with wine, see what you like, what you don't like, and you may say, I love this bottle. And everybody may say, yeah, I love this bottle too. But this way you could differentiate, you could see what $15 or $10 or whatever buys you for your money. Um, again, and then, and then if you go to another um, category and you want to just take three of the same wine from three different countries or three different regions then you'll know that you love Merlot from this region and you hate it when it's from that region and maybe not I mean it's a perpetual thing and this is the great thing about wine um, you're gonna find very very often that you don't need to spend a hundred dollars for a fancy bottle of wine there are plenty of ten dollar wines which are great and then keep them a secret because the second somebody finds out that this $10 bottle was better than the $100 bottle, it's gonna go and sell out, or the next time they get it in, that bottle of wine is gonna be significantly more money. Once a wine reviewer at a fancy magazine, like Wine Spectator or whatever, gets a hold of this bottle and tastes it and give it a 94 rating or a 95 rating, or whatever the case may be, the price is gonna shoot up. Um, when we go out to dinner, the price of the bottle of wine should never exceed the price of the meal. So. Make friends with your retailers at the wine store. You know, ask them, say, hey, listen, we're going out for pizza. We're going out for steak. We're going out for seafood. What do you recommend that's under $25? What would you drink? So this is how you learn about wine. It's very, very easy for you to tell your difference between the whites and the reds and the rosés because there's more acidity in the lighter wines, or at least I think so. White wines are more citrusy. It's better with fish. Um, 
You should always buy a bottle of wine that complements the food that you're eating. And you know what? I just don't like white wine. I'll drink it, but I don't really care for it. So when somebody says you have to have white wine with fish, that's nonsense. If you don't like white wine, no matter what white wine you get, it's never going to complement the flavor of that fish because you just don't like the taste of white wine. I would choose a lighter red. So it's whatever wine you like. If you like red, stick with red. Even if it's seafood, just find one that's not as strong and powerful like this, um, like this Mondavi Cab. You know, that is better for richer meals. Um, and you don't ever want to drink on an empty stomach, so you know, taste it with food. But if you're gonna put out cheese and crackers, make sure it's not your like jalapeno jack or your um, you know these spicy cheeses, whatever the case may be. Choose neutral flavors so that it doesn't affect your palate. Nothing with a lot of heavy garlic. Um, and you know, go on to YouTube. There's this interesting program called Psalm, and it's about sommeliers. These are wine experts, and even they get it wrong some of the time. So don't let anybody dictate what you should and shouldn't drink. Try it out. Give it a taste. Enjoy. Cheers. Red, red wine, you make my feet so fine. You keep me rocking all of the time. Red, red wine, you make my feet so grand. I feel a million.